The third Democratic Party primary debate is upon us, and I wanted to do a video kind of giving you what I think we should expect, um, my impressions about the candidates, and what I hope to see. So the individuals who will be participating is Joe Biden, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Julian Castro, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang. And let me just say that Tulsi Gabbard absolutely should be included in this debate. The fact that she's not is a disgrace. But with this crop of candidates, you know, we will nonetheless see, I think, a really interesting debate. This is going to be three hours long. Incredibly long. Um, this is going to be a marathon. But nonetheless, um, this is interesting because we have everyone on one stage, all the front runners, and some of these individuals who have been polling consistently at one or two percent if they're lucky so when you have bernie warren and biden as the front runners what can we possibly expect to see because you see you know moderates and progressives towards the top so are we going to see everyone dogpile on bernie sanders and elizabeth warren or will we see everyone try to take down joe biden so my answer to that is i think we're probably going to see a little bit of both. I think that there's still going to be a strong emphasis on Biden because he is the front runner still. Um, that's changing quickly, but nonetheless, he is the front runner. So I think you're going to see a lot of people, potentially Pete Buttigieg, Kamala Harris, and Cory Booker, kind of focus their attention on Joe Biden. And you may see Pete Buttigieg, Beto O'Rourke, and possibly Cory Booker focus their attention on Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, because if you are in this race, if you're at this debate, you know, you have an interest in taking down the front runners in hopes that you can take their spot. I mean, think about this. When Kamala Harris destroyed Joe Biden, she jumped in the polls. So you're going to see people want to replicate that success, whether they focus their fire on Biden or Bernie and Warren. That's going to be the ultimate question. I think we're going to see a mixture of both, but predominantly Biden will be the main target. Now, here's what I would like to see. I want Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren to replicate their strategy in that last debate. I think they both shined, and it was absolutely useful for them to team up to take on the centrists. And they absolutely dominated that debate. Bernie Sanders, I think, probably outperformed Warren slightly, but she still did a phenomenal job. So if we see them replicate that strategy and go in as a united front, this could really bode well for them. Now, I understand... At one point, Bernie and Warren, if they remain at the top, they're going to have to initially turn the barrels towards one another, and that's fine. But that can come later. There's still too many people in this race, and you've got to take out the big dog, Joe Biden. Once he tanks, then we can start talking about Bernie and Warren going at each other. But for now, strategically, it makes more sense for them to team up and take on Joe Biden. When it comes to Andrew Yang and Beto O'Rourke, these two individuals, I don't know how confrontational they'll be, but I think that Andrew Yang will probably be the least confrontational, but there is a chance that he could potentially direct his fire at Bernie Sanders. He has been kind of taking a few shots at Bernie Sanders. He retweeted an anti-Bernie Sanders tweet, so it is possible that he does target Bernie Sanders, and strategically, this actually does make sense for Andrew Yang, because at this point, you are in that mid-tier, so if you want to move up, it does behoove you to focus your fire on one of the front runners, so you can kind of get your name out there. That's how you get all the big headlines. So. This is a possibility, although Andrew Yang, he does seem to be not confrontational at all at debates. Although, you know, that debate performance from the first one to the second one was a drastic improvement. So, you know, I expect him to improve in this one as well. So, I mean, that's why I say it could go either way. He could be non-confrontational or he could go after Bernie Sanders. It's really up in the air, I think. And Beto O'Rourke, will he may call out Bernie or Biden. But I'm not necessarily banking on that. If I had to guess who would call out Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, I would probably say it's going to be split between Cory Booker and maybe Pete Buttigieg, possibly Julian Castro. I really can't visualize a situation where Kamala Harris goes after Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren because she has been trying to convince us that she is in that same camp. Now, that's laughable. She's absolutely not progressive. She's a neoliberal centrist Democrat 
who has tried to walk a fine line but failed miserably. But I don't see her going after uh, Bernie and Warren, but I do see her potentially going after Joe Biden. When it comes to Amy Klobuchar, aside from Yang, I think that she will also not be very confrontational. But if she doesn't pick it up and start attacking Joe Biden... I don't know why she's even here because she really is trying to be that centrist. You know, she's competing in that centrist space and she hasn't been confrontational. Biden is still dominating. She can say, look, Biden is clearly out of touch. Biden is not competent. He is clearly deteriorating mentally. I'm a woman. I'm younger. Why would you vote for Biden over me? She can make that case and potentially get a jump. I mean, you and I think that, that argument, you know, it comes off as pandering and it's disingenuous, but there are plenty enough Democratic Party loyalists who support Biden that might rethink their support, you know, just based on that. But ultimately, the goal here is to continue to drive down Biden's support. Um, but the thing about that is these other candidates like Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, and Kamala Harris, who seem like they have the most to gain, theoretically, by Biden going down, you see... If they attack Joe Biden, there's polls that indicate that a lot of Joe Biden supporters have Bernie Sanders as their second choice. So it's not going to be a guarantee that they flip to whoever attacks Biden. It could go to Bernie. So if they take down Biden, then they're inadvertently helping Bernie in a sense, if that does hold true, if that one poll from Harris X, I believe, uh, was correct. So this is going to be certainly an interesting debate to watch. I will be watching for... Bernie and Warren to form another temporary alliance and uh, take down the centrists. And I am expecting Joe Biden to have another poor performance. Um, if he doesn't come prepared, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's evident that he hasn't been performing very well at these debates. And he's got to pull something off if he wants to maintain that lead. I don't think he's going to do it. Kamala Harris, she went down substantially after that last debate. And Tulsi Gabbard absolutely exposed her horrible criminal justice record. So she, I am expecting to come prepared. She's going to go after Biden, possibly maybe Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I don't really see her again going after Bernie or Warren, but it's possible. She's got to basically... She's got to shine. She's got to have some fireworks. Pete Buttigieg, he really does need to have a standout moment because while I previously thought it was fine if he just maintained, if he really wants to move away from, you know, fourth and fifth and really crack into the top, he's got to make something happen. Same with Cory Booker. But overall, this will be interesting and I will give you my analysis after the debate happens. Um, obviously, I'm going to be rooting for Bernie Sanders and um, we'll see how it goes.